Good morning. Today is Wednesday the 10th of November and it's the feast of Pope Saint Leo the Great. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who never allow the gates of hell to prevail against your church, firmly founded on the apostolic rock, we grant her, we pray, that through the intercession of Pope Saint Leo, she may stand firm in your truth and know the protection of lasting peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. First reading continues from the Book of Wisdom, this is chapter 6, verses 1 to 11. Listen, kings, and understand. Rulers of remotest lands take warning. Hear this, you who have thousands under your rule, who boast of your hordes of subjects. For power is a gift to you from the Lord. Sovereignty is the Most High. He himself will probe your acts and scrutinize your intentions. If, as administrators of his kingdom, you have not governed justly nor observed the law, nor behaved as God would have you behave, he will fall on you swiftly and terribly. Ruthless judgment is reserved for the high and mighty. The lowly will be compassionately pardoned. The mighty will be mightily punished. For the Lord of all does not cower before a personage, does not stand in awe of greatness, since he himself has made small and great and provides for all alike with strict scrutiny for those in power. Yes, despots, my words are for you, that you may learn what wisdom is and not transgress. For they who observe holy things holily will be adjudged holy, and accepting instruction from them will find their defence in them. Look forward, therefore, to my words, yearn for them, and they will instruct you. The Word of the Lord. In the Gospel we continue in Luke, the journey to Jerusalem, chapter 17. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus travelled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. He entered one of the village. Ten lepers came to meet him. They stood same way off and called to him, Jesus, Master, take pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go and show yourselves to the priests. Now as they were going away, they were cleansed. Finding himself cured, one of them turned back, praising God at the top of his voice and threw himself at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. The man was a Samaritan. This made Jesus say, Were not all ten made clean? The other nine, where are they? It seems that no one has come back to pray, give praise to God except as foreigner. And he said to the man, Stand up and go on your way. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. A number of themes run through today's reading readings, but let's begin with whose feast it is, Pope Saint Leo. He was a Pope in the 5th century, the first half, and it was the time, 14, 420 to 440 AD, when Rome was under attack from outside foreign powers, in particular Attila the Hun. And it was Pope Saint Leo who kept the church together, even though the civil authorities in Rome were crumbling. And secondly, by diplomacy and by skill, managed to stop Attila the Hun invading and sacking Rome. He protected both the church and the people of Rome. And that's why the prayer that we said at the beginning of the, the service is about the gods through the Pope protecting the church and the people. The relevance of the wisdom passage is that rulers and uh, people who are in charge, even if they're despots or dictators, are subject to law, a higher law. Nowadays we would turn and say, well perhaps wisdom is closer to what we would call natural law, that everybody, through the status of being human, has uh, rights and obligations and people can be held for a breach of the natural right um, of the people that are in any way unfairly persecuted or, or killed. Then the only understanding was that in nature God's plan, God's wisdom was implanted in the very structure of reality. 
and thus, yes, as I say, later becomes a, a theory of natural law. But at the time it was seen that it was God's wisdom in the structure of what is right and wrong, the structure of reality, that means that nobody is outside God's wisdom, God's law. And that um, the whole point of this reading is that uh, even if they're the worst dictators, they should know that they will be judged, they will be held responsible. And of course this implies uh, an afterlife, a, a judgment at the end of the day. And this is part of wisdom literature's great leap, is that it does believe in an afterlife, and that the injustices of this world can't be sorted out now, but are sorted out in a future world um, where God's rule and, and God's values are supreme. This world, we give thanks for it. And this gospel story, this beautiful gospel story of the ten lepers who come, clearly it didn't matter whether you were a Jew or Samaritan, if you got leprosy, it made you an outcast either way from either community. Normally Jews and Samaritans didn't mix, but if you got leprosy, then tough luck, your organs got mixed and excluded and had to live together. Anyway, he heals on the border between um, Israel and Samaria. There are these ten lepers, and they come and ask for pity, and they ask for healing. And Jesus grants it. But only one comes to say thank you. And it's more than just, it's good polite manners to say thank you. It's an affirmation of faith in Jesus. And Jesus precisely says, your faith has saved you. And it's, Luke is putting this in as part of, this is Jesus and God saying that the whole human race, is called to repentance, the whole human race is invited to salvation. Nobody is excluded because they're not Israelites. So again, it's part of the parable of the Good Samaritan and a couple of other places where Jesus makes it clear his kingdom is for all. And this universal invitation is something we rejoice especially in today, our interfaith work, our willingness to work together with others. Uh, and not set up barriers because of faith. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, Lord, nourish the lives of your people. Christ the Good Shepherd laid down his life for his sheep. Let us praise him with grateful hearts as we pray. Lord, nourish the lives of your people. Christ our Lord, in the Holy Pastors you reveal your love for us. May we never be deprived of the care you show through them. Lord, nourish the lives of your people. Through your sacred ministers, you are present in our midst as the shepherd of our souls. Never cease to guide us through their teaching and encouragement. Lord, nourish the lives of your people. In the saints, you lead your people. You manifest your power of healing souls and bodies. Remain always with us to renew our lives in holiness. Lord, nourish the lives of your people. By example of the saints, you instruct your faithful in the ways of wisdom and love. Through our pastors, help us to grow to the full stature of perfection. Lord, nourish the lives of your people. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord God, you built your church on the firm foundation of the Apostle Peter, and you promised that the gates of hell would never overcome it. Supported by the prayers of Pope St. Leo, we ask that you will keep the church faithful to your truth and maintain it in enduring peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Have a good day.